Item number, SCP-882. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-882 is to be kept in a fluid environment at all times, consisting of no less than 40% seawater. Object is to be kept suspended by non-metallic means, currently cotton fiber line that is to be changed daily. Object is also to be checked daily for any signs of rust flaking. If any part of SCP-882 appears uncoated with rust, it must immediately be immersed in a 100% seawater solution. Water must be taken directly from the ocean. Reduce concentration only when the object is again coated in rust. No metal may be placed in the containment area. Only organic materials are allowed in the containment area, and any contact with SCP-882 requires the use of thick cotton gloves. Any metal making contact with it is to be heat-severed, melted down, and kept immersed in 100% seawater in a separate area. Any auditory issues reported by staff must be reported immediately, and affected personnel must submit to a full psychological examination and, depending on results, either transfer to another facility or permanent containment at expunged. Description SCP-882 appears to be a random assembly of gears cables, pulleys, screws, belts, all made of an amalgam of various metals. Object's size at the time of recovery was approximately 87 cubic meters. Current size is approximately 12 cubic meters. SCP-882 rusts quickly in seawater. No identifiable energy source has been found, but all components will begin to move, if not coated in rust. SCP-882 is completely silent at all times, no matter what level of activity SCP-882 reaches. Any metal touching the object will become permanently affixed to it, and over a period of a few days, becomes a new part of the object. Organic matter remains unaffected. SCP-882 is extremely resilient with tensile strength and toughness above those of aircraft-grade titanium alloy by weight, even though its composition appears to be a random alloy of iron, tin, gold, and other metals, some as of yet unidentified. Extreme focused heat must be applied over several hours to cut even a small portion free of the main assembly. Persons remaining in the vicinity of the object for prolonged periods have developed auditory hallucinations while near the object, mainly the sound of grinding and clicking. The sound intensifies and is abated only by throwing metal into the object. Subjects in advanced states of psychosis have thrown themselves into the object, resulting in almost instant death by crushing. The body is often drawn in and impossible to recover. SCP-882 was recovered from a location at the northeast coast of Banks Island. Area was barren of all metal and metallic ore in a one-mile radius. SCP-882 was found at the geometric center of the area. SCP-882 had become submerged in seawater at the time of discovery. A small town was found nearby, abandoned for several years. SCP-882 was removed and shortly started to flake off rust, causing the varied parts to begin motion. After several accidents, Dr. Gears authorized SCP-2519 to be played on loop, which successfully reduced the object's motion, enabling safe access. SCP-882 was then cut down and contained on site. Note. SCP-882 is not to be brought into the vicinity of SCP-271 or any subject possibly contaminated by SCP-217. Addendum. Please review Interview 882-1 for further information. Interview 882-1. Interviewed. Richard Wright. Interviewer. Dr. Gears. Forward. Richard Wright is identified as a survivor from the small community near the initial recovery location of SCP-882. Begin audio log. 
1304 hours. Dr. Gears, please take a seat. State your name for the record, please. Mr. Wright, Richard Logan Wright. Everyone calls me Rich, though. Dr. Gears, excellent, thank you. Mr. Wright, do you recall the date when you first saw the object in question? Mr. Wright, God, when was it? I'm not really sure. It was a while ago. Alan found it first, wrecked his boat on it. He told a few of the other fellas about it, said they could sell it for a bundle for scrap. We all thought it was a chunk off a jet or a cargo ship. Dr. Gears, at what point did the device start operating? Mr. Wright, the next day, damn thing shook off rust like a dog with fleas. Started spinning slow, then sped up. By the time I saw it, it was really running. Jimmy tried to get closer, try and see what was powering it, or why it was so quiet, but he slipped. Got a bad cut over his eye and got the hell out of there. Alan seemed kinda off. Kept asking us if we were hearing anything. Miss Parker thought part of it was gold. Even tried to jam part of it with a pipe to get at it. That pipe stuck fast, and smacked her a good one when the gear it was on spun around. After that, people mostly kept away. Dr. Gears. Were there any other incidents of people being injured or hearing noises? Mr. Wright. Not at first. That's the thing. It was so damn quiet. Everyone kind of forgot about it for a while. Alan was keeping it in an old storeroom by the dock, and nobody really went out there much. He started looking bad. Said he couldn't sleep, that he kept hearing that thing grind away. Father Pat started dropping by, tried to talk to him, told him to get rid of it. He was gone for a couple days, and then suddenly the two of them turn up together, happy as clams. Subject trails off, shaking slightly. Dr. Gears. Mr. Wright? Mr. Wright. Subject rubs face and shakes head. I'm fine. Sorry. So, Father Pat and Old Alan show up, fresh as daisies. Say they've got the thing figured out. I wasn't paying that much attention. This whole thing had me spooked. Been hearing stuff from the storeroom, grinding and squealing, really quiet. Anyway, they said some damn thing about it being from somewhere else. That God made it. That was it for me, and I left. Dr. Gears. Did you believe them? Mr. Wright. What, that it was from God? No, no. I don't know. I didn't really know what to think. This damn machine kept spinning away. No power to it. And eating metal, too. That pole Miss Parker hit it with? It turned into a giant screw shaft. Looked like it had always been there. More people started getting interested, started listening to Alan and Father Pat. Told everyone to bring metal to it. Told them the gears were the voice of God, that it grew louder as we turned away, and softer as we brought it offerings. Dr. Gears, did you bring metal to it as well, or spend any extended period of time near the object? Mr. Wright, the subject is silent for several seconds. The hell does that matter? You could hear this thing all over town. Gotta be folks couldn't even sleep. Just clanking, grinding, screaming at all hours of the night. Giving it metal helped. God damn it, I didn't want to. I know it wasn't God. I never said it was. Everyone else was falling over themselves to make Alan and Father Pat happy. I just wanted some damn sleep. There's not a goddamn thing wrong with that. Subject bangs table with hands. Is highly upset and breathing heavily. Dr. Gears. Sir, I will request that you calm yourself. I am asking questions, not accusing. Please return to your seat. Mr. Wright, take several deep breaths. I'm sorry. Over a couple of weeks, everything got fed to that thing. It was just how things were. We were pretty isolated, you know? It's not like we had much else. You'd just make a couple trips out to the storehouse and toss any metal you happen to find in. Always seemed to be people there, just watching it. It tore a hole in the roof after a while. Father Pat started getting strange, telling us it wasn't enough. I think the noise was getting to him. Said it needed something more meaningful. 
Subject trails off. Dr. Gears. Mr. Wright? Mr. Wright is silent for 48 seconds. I came in one night because I heard people shouting from the storehouse. Father Pat was leading a prayer to this thing, but it didn't sound like any prayer I knew. People were coming up, and he bent over them. They screamed, and then he turned to that big mass of metal. I, I thought he was giving communion until I saw the pliers in his hand. Dr. Gears. I'm sorry, pliers? Mr. Wright. He was yanking out people's fillings. He was pulling out their f teeth and feeding them to that thing. Subject is shouting, appearing highly upset. He started screaming about it not being enough. That it needed more, but there wasn't any more. There was barely any metal left anywhere. Then he pointed at Alan. He said he was hiding metal from the great machine. Alan screamed that he didn't have anything. Father Pat said he had a metal joint in his hip. Everyone got up at once. Oh God, oh God. They grabbed him. Everyone just grabbed him. He started screaming. Subject is crying and shouting. He kept screaming and screaming, and nobody cared. I saw his arm go in, saw all his fingers break, and pull the rest of the arm in, and I ran. What could I do? Jesus, I couldn't stop it. There were too many. And that thing was screaming and screaming, and Alan was screaming, and Father Pat. Subject falls to the floor, sobbing and shouting. Dr. Gears. This interview is concluded. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Security, please see Mr. Wright out. End log. Closing statement. Mr. Wright attempted suicide shortly after interview. Subject is currently being held on suicide watch and for observation. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-881, Little People, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.